Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to set the timer. Uh, thank you, everyone, to, for coming this morning so early. I understand that it's uh, an effort because yesterday you had uh, a party, so thank you for coming. Uh, first, <coughs> Uh, well, uh, as, as Parvina introduced me, I'm Thomas Reed. I work in a company which is Other Plane Labs, where we are providing infrastructure and building tooling for, for the for whole, whole Witnet ecosystem. Uh, today, we will have a, an overview of the different standards that are right now in the ecosystem. We will also talk or explain a bit what's ADO, uh, what's the Alliance of Decentralized Oracle, and what is its purpose. And also, we will have um, uh, good practices or some interesting things that you could implement if in your DeFi protocol if we will have standards. Right now, you will be able to implement them, but there are some inconvenience with, if, without a, a common standard. And first, let me talk about uh, the context. Witnet, uh, I've been working with Witnet since, since the beginning, and Witnet is a decentralized Oracle network. And when we start implementing WitNet, we want to be chain agnostic because we thought that the future will be a decentralized, uh, multi-chain uh, scenario, and apparently we were right. But uh, Cosmos SDK and Substrate were not mature enough when we started the development, so we need to implement everything from scratch. So sadly, we need to invest two years in implementing the full protocol, but right now is where we are main it, and it's a or a really parametric uh, oracle, so you can uh, create your own data request with a, with a domain-specific language that we have created, and you can, everybody can consume any public a API. So as we invest two, two years in implementing the full protocol, when we were ready, as we are a layer one solution, we start looking for new, for, for how the different oracles were working, and we want to provide the same interface we were to to, to allow smart contract developers to interact with it in the same way that other, uh, the, that the, how they are used to consume different oracles. So we start looking for different standards or, or to find a common way to consume oracles. And most probably you know that we didn't find too much. Every, if, if you want to consume an oracle, it's completely different from one to, to other. But before going to what we find, the different oracle standards, uh, let me stop and reflect about why we need uh, Oracle standards. First, uh, the Oracles are an important layer in the Web3 ecosystem, and we are a, a service that smart contract developers uh, externalize, and one of our, our goals should be improve the general experience. Uh, if, as if we have common standards, we will be improving their general uh, developer experience. Also, if we have a, a common interface uh, when we are consuming oracles, we will be saving time and money for the developers and the final users. So that should be one of our goals. And also, if we have a common standard, means that we have been discussing on a table, we have been discussing and talking about the inconvenience and the good points about having a, a standard or not, and we will be strengthening the full uh, layer, the, one of the most important layers of the Web3, which is the, the Oracle layer. And also, one of the main ideas behind the, the oracles are the, um, the, the composability. So if we are facilitating, if we are creating common standards that people could follow, we are facilitating that composability on top of the, the different uh, smart contracts. So if there are good reasons to have standards, uh, Apparently, there are good incentives to implement them. Why don't we have a, a common way to have standards? Oh. <clears throat> uh, sorry, one, one side note. When I'm talking about a standard way to consume oracles or standards in Oracle, I'm not talking about uh, define a common way that the different oracles should behave. I'm talking about how the different oracles should export, expose their API or their interface. Uh, I think that right now, nobody will be interested in, in defining a common way to, to build a, an oracle. Uh, some of the challenges that we have right now if we want to, to build a, an oracle, uh, an oracle standard, could be that the, there's a lot of marketing regarding this topic and there's no single solution for, for the oracle uh, problem. There are a lot of different uh, solutions, there are a lot of different approaches, and 
the solution that one Oracle can implement it could be completely different uh, from, from the other. So it, that, it's a huge problem if we want to standardize, standardize the, the API. So every uh, Oracle works in, in a different way, has a unique implementation of their architecture, and it's difficult for them if they are already live on mainnet to update their interface to be able to, to be compatible with an standard. Also, sadly, there's a lot of competition between different solutions. If you are uh, an Oracle, that it's, you are one of the top players in the ecosystem, why are, why are you incentivized to change the way you are providing data? Why are you incentivized to change your API if it's working for you? So sadly, this is a problem that we have right now, and there are no clear uh, incentive for them to, to chain and update and, and be able to, to be with a standard. And also there's a, a lot of awareness, and I think this is the main problem here. Uh, for instance, the, the, the main example is this conference. Most probably all, all of you have been attending different conferences, different crypto conferences, or conferences focus on NFTs, DAOs, mm, uh, DeFi. But most probably this is the first time that you are attending a, an Oracle conference. And this is, the, I think this is the main problem that we don't have a standard because we didn't reflect enough. Uh, we didn't talk with the different solutions and we didn't uh, agree on, on common things. And the first uh, standard that was proposed was proposed uh, uh, several years ago and uh, nobody followed that standard. There were a problem with, with that because as, as you can see, there are a lot of different interfaces. And this standard was quite complex in the sense that um, it was too generic. It tries to define how the different oracles should behave, and it was not focused on how the people is interacting with the oracle. So if you want to follow this standard, you will need to update co completely how your oracle works to be compatible with it and update. And so at the end of the day, you could implement this if you are starting to build your your Oracle, but if you are an Oracle that is already live, uh, it's almost impossible to, to be compatible with that because you will need to rewrite everything and the effort, it's, it's going to be huge. And uh, here you have the, um, the links if you are curious in how the different uh, interfaces are uh, implemented and, and so on. It's quite interesting, but it was so difficult to, to implement. And while we were waiting and we were talking with different oracles in, in the ecosystem, we found a, a group of, of people, a group, a tolerant group, that they were, uh, they created a, a group which is the alliance of decentralized oracles. When we found them, I think they were inside that group was Taylor for sure, Band and IXEP, I think. And the goal of this of this alliance was to enable uh, smart contract developers to use decentralized through uh, decentralized circle through plug and play standard interfaces and, and protocols. Uh, basically, the goal was to make things easier for for the developers and and to allow them to consume or, or oracles in, in an easy way. It's this is not a, a private group. It's something that everybody can join. There's no approval process or you don't need to sign up. You can only need to raise your hand and say that you want to be inside that group and you are more than welcome to start uh, asking questions, promoting and discussing and <coughs> uh, if we have more people here, we'll be more healthier for, more healthier for the full ecosystem. And uh, Edo at the beginning uh, was focused on, okay, we are going to provide common standards, we are going to make things easier for developers. So the Edo thought that we should implement a, a new standard because the first one was not success. So Edo proposed a, a new standard. So you, we had a, a new standard. And uh, jokes aside, uh, this is a, a completely different one because it's not focused on how the oracle should behave. It's quite simple, maybe you will be impressed because it's only one interface with one function that you need to implement and it's extremely easy to follow. And this is the, the important thing of, of, of that because if we are adding a lot of different functions to implement, we are complicating things for all the different protocols that are going to implement the, the, the standard and also we are making things more complex for the different uh, consumers. So 
Uh, basically, uh, the main idea of that standard was that, the simplicity, and uh, it's quite simple uh, to implement. Uh, if you are a, a protocol that you want to, to implement, you only will be need to implement the value for function, and the main idea of that is that you will be able to call that value for function with a argument, which is a deterministic ID. So you only need to hash the result of adding the type of data that you want to consume. For instance, if you want to consume a price fit, which is the, the main uh, case right now in for oracles, uh, you will have to set a price. Uh, the name, you also need to add the name of the data that you want to consume. For instance, you want the ETH USD pair and the decimals that uh, that data uh, is going to retrieve or is going to, to give you. And if you call the value for with that uh, ID, uh, you will receive an output which contains the timestamp. And this timestamp, uh, it's associated with the, with the last time that the value was updated. This is extremely important because uh, it allows the developer to decide if the result is good enough or not, and if they should discard it or if they can consume the, the value. Uh, also, of course, they will get the, the value of the for the request they, <coughs> the request they, they get. And also, they are going to get a, a status code. This status code is quite similar to the HTTP uh, status code, so any developer uh, is already familiar with that, and it will allow them to, to handle errors, so they will be able to consume the result or, or know if there, there was an error in, in the request. So what's what's next? Uh, basically, uh, I had when I when I wrote this slide, there were a lot of dif different things that uh, came to my mind, and there's some lot of different uh, things that we discussed yesterday in in, a, in an open table. And well, right now uh, the standard or the status of, of the last standard, it's. It's sad, but uh, the only oracle that is fully compatible with the standard is Witnet. And I know for sure that there are other oracles that are implementing uh, their oracle. They are building their oracle right now, and they are going to be compatible with the ID. And I know that there are a couple of more oracles that they are interested to be uh, compatible with that standard. So uh, in my opinion, a, a really good idea should should be encourage the standard adoption to have a common way to interact uh, with the um, with, uh, standard and a common way to, con to interact with the different oracles because it's something that different oracles agree on and it's something that if we agree on, on that, why are we going to implement it? And I know that right now will be some difficulties to implement that because you, are, you have an already you have an already working uh, protocol, and but the, uh, if you want to implement it, there are solutions that I think I, I know that there are not the perfect solution. But for instance, we could build a wrapper on top of the main of the uh, a wrapper on top of the oracle, which is compatible with the standard. So the final user could consume that wrapper, call it with the value for, and the wrapper will call the um, the, the oracle uh, with the with their own API and. I know that this uh, has an increased error surface and could have an inconvenience of, of the higher cash cost depending on the oracle that you need to call uh, behind. And also, there's something that uh, came uh, yesterday, uh, a really good idea for, for a standardization could be to agree on different uh, on different good practices for oracles, uh, to have a list of all the different good practices that oracles uh, agree and to have a list of what would happen if you are not following these good practices. And this is something that I'm extremely happy because uh, we have been discussing and we agree on have more discussions and regular discussions in, in the future with Edo. So it's a good thing. And now the, the main goal of oracles right now could be DeFi, basically. Uh, uh, they, I don't remember who said that uh, the first day. Uh, the, main or, the main goal for, or the main use case for oracles right now, there could be a lot more, a lot, lot, lot more, but the main uh, one right now is DeFi. Almost all the different um, protocols need uh, needs data, and if you are a DeFi protocol that needs to start consuming data, uh, 
maybe you could be a bit confused because, there are, as I said at the beginning, there's a lot of marketing around, around this, this topic. Most probably you've, you have heard that there's a protocol that have already solved the Oracle problem and they have repeated a lot a lot during those years. And sadly for them, it's not something that you can solve. The, the Oracle problem is not a problem that you can solve. As I said, there's a lot of different approaches that you can have to, to, to resolve or to try to solve this problem. And also, uh, the oracles are constrained by the blockchain trilemma. So if you are building an oracle or if you want to consume an oracle who is a focus on decentralization and scalability, it's going to be less secure than a protocol that is focused on security and scalability but it would be less decentralized than the first one. So it's extremely important uh, to know when you are going to consume an oracle that every oracle has its own trade-offs. And also, it's important that the DeFi protocol or the consumer of the oracle needs to do their own research about the different oracles that exist and how they have to choose, uh, because uh, not every oracle fits all the needs of all the different DeFi protocols. So you will need to assess and look for the perfect use case or the perfect oracle that, uh, that adjusts to, um, to your use case. And then you will be able to have a defensive main mindset when you are consuming that oracle, because this is something that most, nobody says regularly because of the marketing thing, but the oracles could fail. And it, it doesn't matter which oracle, if you are really big, you are small, but at any time, an oracle could fail. And if you know what are the trade-offs that the oracle had to do, you will be more prepared to be a def defensive or to implement a solution in case of the, of the oracle fail. So you need to, to know that. And a really good idea or some good practices uh, for DeFi. There are a, a lot of more, but this is just an example of a good practice that if you are a DeFi protocol and you want to, to be more or to have a defensive approach when you are consuming oracles, a uh, really good idea, in my opinion, is to have a, an oracle aggregator, uh, an on-chain oracle aggregator. So uh, uh, this is something that could have an extra cost right now if you have if we don't have a common standard or if there's no a common way to consume oracles, um, the gas cost will increase because you will need to implement another solution for everyone. And right now, if you want to implement uh, this kind of oracle aggregator, you are going to, to need or you are going to, to, you will need, the first approach that you will have to, to have is a uh, consume and, and generic approach, something like the Aidon Millionaire set that the Taylor guys implemented for, uh, for a showcase uh, in when, the, for when the second uh, standard was proposed. Uh, but I think that this, there is no deployed version of that contract, and you will need to find someone that adjusts to, to your use case and use that. And the second approach, the, the one that is more wise, in my opinion, right now, would be implement an ad hoc solution for, for consuming different oracles. This is something that the first day, the, I think the liquidity guys said that they are doing. I think it's the right direction to go. I think it's, extra, it's a really wise thing, I think, because they are consuming a main oracle, and in case of and also they are retrieving the information from a second oracle. And if the first one is failing or is not providing uh, data good enough for your use case, you will be able to consume the, the fallback oracle. So uh, kudos for them, because it's, I think it's the way to go. Uh, they are not aggregating the data uh, from the different sources or the, from the different oracles, but I think it's a, a really uh, a wise decision. And also, uh, before finish my talk, uh, I would like to reflect a bit on what the oracles are and what's the, the current state. Uh, right now, as I said, we are in an ecosystem where sadly there's a lot of marketing, a lot of competition. Most times when an oracle or when we saw in different social media and we compare oracles, we only say, okay, my solution is better than yours or my oracle is better than yours because it's more scalable, it's scalable, it's focused on scalability, the finality, and a lot of different things that 
but we are not discussing about uh, the oracles in general. We are not sitting in a table. We are not having regular meetings about the, the current status of oracles. And it's, it's a pity because uh, oracles are providing a, a common value to, to the full ecosystem. So everybody or the full ecosystem needs real data. We are, the, uh, we are between the real world and the Web3 world. And we are that in, in, intermediate. And this, also, this is also an idea that has been repeated along this day. If the Oracle layer is uh, weak, or uh, this is a chain, and it's going to be the weakest chain, so we are weakened at the full Web3 ecosystem. And also, we need to start thinking, we need to, uh, to discuss a lot of different questions that we didn't have in, in mind. But for instance, are right now, in the current state of Oracles, are they sustainable in the long term? Are they even sustainable? Most of them, are they even sustainable in the short term? How or who is really paying the cost of making a data request in the different Oracles? And also, there's a lot of literature. There's a, a lot of different questions that we have made uh, or a lot of literature, a lot of talks about public goods. Should we start considering uh, oracles as a public good? Should we start looking for different ways to, to sponsor or to subsidize those data requests and those, uh, uh, and those oracles? So in my opinion, there are a lot of different things that we have to, to continue discussing. And this is not, as I said, this is not a problem that is already solved. And we need to encourage and spread that opinion that we need to discuss. There's, not, nothing, there's nothing that is subtle on a statement that, we should continue discussing uh, about this. And basically, it's because if we are going to, at the end of the day, the goal of the, all the oracles should be strengthen the whole uh, ecosystem to, have a, to provide a common value. And we need to, to continue doing that. So I think I'm on time.